Ho, what's going on YouTube? It's Donnie B all day. Listen, you guys, you know, just by sticking around and watching and and being on the channel, you help me out, right? You guys are brothers of the blade. You guys are with me. You guys are my people. You respond to me. You guys chat with me. You get me on Facebook and we jig and jag back and forth. Um, listen, man, this, this community has become more like a family. You know, you guys are, you guys are in it with me and I appreciate you. So to show my appreciation, I thought, well, I know there's, it's not like a big, um, a big momentous number going on right now. Like, Oh, it's number 10,000. Nothing like that. It's just another regular day. So I figured why not do just a regular day giveaway and I wanted to do something a little different. First of all, the knife. Um, this knife is, it's called the Blue Point. It's a 1095 knife, right? And what really got me on these guys was the handles are made of pine cone filled with resin. And I was like, well, I want a pine cone handle. So I don't have one of these knives yet, but I am picking up two of them and that's exactly what i'm gonna do so i'm actually in the process right now to i'm telling them uh what i want sent and uh, i'm already getting something up there yeah 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 all is good here's my address so two of these are coming to me obviously i only need one so the giveaway has to happen now because there's going to be an extra blade in pocket, right? We can't have that. We can't, we can't have too many blades. So, um, so finishing up right now, it's set. Um, I am looking at Saturday, February 20th. By that date, they should hopefully be in. That's done. So with that done let's get into how you can be the second one to own one um now i'm kind of excited because i've seen these things and i wanted one and i bam maybe maybe later maybe later maybe later 1095 steel can't be that bad um it's got a sweet shape to it and i love the pine cone handle i love the look of it so we'll soon find out in hand so this is what i'm gonna do this is how you're gonna win and this is gonna be a little different i'm going to give you 20 examples of either jobs I've had or things I have done and every single one of these 20 except one is going to be true as in absolute it happened it's fact I did it um, except one <laughs> so what's gonna happen is everybody watching this video you're gonna get one guess on which one is the incorrect one, which one's not true. You're gonna get one guess. If somebody gets it right, but they have more than one guess down, maybe you maybe you uh, commented more than once or you put two guesses in the same slot, guess what? I don't care if you're right or not, you're wrong. You didn't get it. So this is gonna to be to only those who pay attention. Everybody gets one shot at this, one shot. For everyone who gets it right, those are going to be names in a hat, right? And we're not going to give it a ton of time. I'm not going to say, okay, here's three weeks. You all get thinking about it. Um, and some of them are going to be easy. Some of them you already know I did because I talked about it. Um, and some of, I mean, some of the stuff like is obviously you guys know I do it because it's on the channel. But so this is what we're going to do. I'm going to give you 20 things, either jobs that I've had or just some stuff that I've done, either crazy stuff or or just whatever, and pick out which one isn't true, all right? So this is how we're gonna do it. I'm just gonna get started. I'm gonna talk about them. I'm gonna go through each one and I'm gonna give a little story about each one. The false one, I'm just gonna have to make this crap as, up as I go along. Um, everything else, I already know, because it happened. Uh, so that's it. So remember, you get one shot. Just think about your answer type in your answer and everybody who typed in the right answer it's going to be between you guys and it might be within like a couple days or something I'll, I'll probably give it two days um to let this thing stew and let people catch up all right so here we go number one knife designer 
I know, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, that's bull. He probably never designed a knife in his life. Got some, I don't know, nothing like that. So, basically, I, I started designing knives, and, and I got picked up by this company called the Kukri House out in Nepal, and they make a lot of my knife designs. And um, my one of my designs is called the D-Bad Old War Bowie. It's a big D-Guard. It's awesome. And uh, it's the number one seller. Number one seller right now. You go to Nepal, you go to Kathmandu, and you say, what's the number one knife selling out of here? And they're going to show you this big buoy with a, with a D-Guard. <sighs> Maybe that's true. Maybe that's true, guys. All right, so number two. I was a... Uh, non-commissioned officer in the u.s army that's right i went into the army i served i became a sergeant and um i got to do things like tour afghanistan and and um and i got a few medals for different things and and i loved my time in the military um i'm out now but i was a u.s army nco non-commissioned officer Number three, constable. I was a sergeant for the Mass Constable Police. Um, my job was, I was the head, I led the warrant division. So I was a door guy. That's what I did. As a matter of fact, uh, one day uh, after a football game, I had broken my shin. And the next day we had to go and run a warrant. And the guy who we were trying to serve tried cutting out the back door of an apartment building. And I had a broken leg. And my lieutenant was pissed. He was like, this is why you shouldn't be playing football because blah, 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 blah. And I ended up chasing the guy down, jumping on the hood of his car, pulled on him, and basically said, you better stop the car. And he did. And we got the guy. So, um, so that was number three. Number four. Number four. I owned my own business um, I, it was called the Special Enforcement Office of America, where I did um, professional bodyguard work um, and um, armed securities and uh, money transferring and, and human transferring, whatever needed to be transferred, I'd transfer it. Um, and that actually gave me a contract with uh, the Peter Pan bus lines, and I was the officer there at the, at the bus station. Uh, one, two, three, four, number five. Um, I worked with a, uh, masonry group and, um, one of the things I got to help build was a Sears automotive center and the Sears automotive center. I mean, if you've ever been to one, it's big. Every single rebar that's inside the Sears automotive center in Enfield, Connecticut, I put it in. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, when we were finishing up the blocks in the building and we were pouring all the um all the concrete down into the into the holes of the cinder blocks uh we were on our last pour and i was the holder of the grout hose for the guy who was aiming and pouring and this grout hose is uh a hundred pounds for every six feet with 75 pounds of pressure with the 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 machine pump that's how it, it pumps out the cement and i had only two guys one here, one way down there, holding this hose like this. And uh, it was the entire length of the building and around one of the sides. And, I, and I, I hear, we can't hold it anymore. And I look back and I'm going, dude, we got one more block. And if I let go, that means the guy pouring, who has his hands like this, he's not holding it strong. If we were on the top of scaffolding, if I let go, he would have went flying. So I knew that no matter what, my job is to hold this damn hose. So, um... So sure enough, these guys look at each other. They look at me. I said, no, they let go. I held on. The thing pulled me down. My face was on the block and my whole neck bent backwards. And I went through the scaffolding down the wall and I was hanging out with one hand. And uh, they were like, my, my shoulder had separated. And they said, oh man, you got to go to the hospital and blah, blah, blah. I said, I can't. They're like, why? And I was like, well, because he's my ride. So I finished the rest of the day with one hand carrying buckets of uh, cement. Um, next, uh, football, man. Uh, I played 17 years in the pro minor leagues. The first couple of years, we were actually considered um, uh, not pro minor league. We were considered like a amateur ball, um, just um, just regular minor leagues, but not pro minor leagues. We were semi-pro. That's what it was called. Um, we were semi-pro football for the first couple of years, but then we moved 
up a league and uh and the rest was played um as a semi-professional level where i was a tight end um and i never never in my entire career had a drop no drops um my best game was seven for seven for 135 yards great game great game um i got to play some linebacker and i got to play some defensive end um and the the one game i played defensive end i had one sack one hurry one tackle behind the line of scrimmage and then on the fourth play i tackled the receiver before he can get a first down that ended the game and i was also the um i was a kicker a punter and a placeholder so that was uh me and football so next uh me and a buddy of mine we went mountain climbing this place called rattlesnake mountain a bunch of people died falling off this mountain and um and I know you're thinking Massachusetts rattlesnakes that can't be but yes we have timber rattlesnakes they are nasty but um so this this mountain is called rattlesnake mountain uh and he and I decided to go for a winter climb and it wasn't long before I found out that he didn't have any gloves no gloves and it was snow like the whole thing was snow so what I did is I said well here you take one of my gloves and I gave him one and we climbed the mountain with a hand and an elbow and we climbed with just that at one point he wrote a paper on this in college and um, I actually have it at one point he got stuck his he was coming up behind me and using my footholds and obviously icy snowy conditions the footholds break away so he got stuck he had nowhere to go and uh, he writes his paper talking about it and he talks about how he told me just to go and he, he was ready he was done he was ready to die and uh, he made his peace and he said, he said, you know, in the, in the story, he's watching me and he's watching me like, just look at things. And he goes, and, and then he did it. He jumped and I did. I literally, I looked, looked around and I saw this little tiny twig of a branch coming out from between two rocks. And I thought I can get there. Then I can help him. He can grab my leg. He can climb up. We could both get out. If not, we're just going to die together. So I jumped off the side of a mountain. No, no ropes, no harnesses, nothing. We were free climbing which is stupid to do in the winter, but that's what we did. So um, so I jumped down, I grabbed this thing, he grabs my leg, we get up, we get out, boom, I'm still alive, he's still alive. Um, next, uh, I did my jumping, my um, skydiving, ooh, I almost knocked down my nutshells, um, at a place uh, called Jump Town. Jump Town in Orange, Massachusetts is the home of sports skydiving, and it is awesome and so i got to um that's where i went to do my little school in there and my classes uh to be able to jump so i could jump on my own and um it was phenomenal and the people there were phenomenal they were just like real people so um so kev man he was the, the first guy i got connected with he was a, a like a jump master he's the one who um i did my first jump with it was a tandem jump and and uh and I said to Kev, I said, hey, man, um, I said, you know, we could just get in this plane, get up there and jump out of this plane and float through the air and land. I get on my Harley and ride in a straight line home and everything will be a OK. I said, or or maybe maybe we can do a little something else and get a little crazy. And he's like, you want the full Monty? I said, I want the full Monty. So long story short, we get to the um, we get to the into the air into the plane and the plane it's an otter and it's rah, so loud we can't even hear and um and so he says okay everything you just learned forget about it i gave, gave you new instructions i couldn't hear a damn thing he was saying i just kept going uh-huh uh-huh uh -huh. so we started with a a uh, triple front flip with some dozy does blah 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 it was awesome had a great time but here's the deal when when i got a little closer with these people back and forth they offered me a job and when you get offered a job to do something where you can get free skydives, you freaking take it. So um, I got to learn how to do um, parachute repair. And I thought that was dope, yo, because basically you're putting other people's lives. In. So it's like, whoo wee. In the army, I got offered a spot with special forces as a rigger. And I was like, oh my God, this is perfect for me parachute repair so um i literally you know you get to sew things not like canopy breaks and things like that you need special equipment all that i, I, I couldn't do all that somebody's gonna die so um 
So that was cool. I got to go to Jump Town, jump, get in good with them, and then get offered a job to do parachute repair and be able to jump for free. Boom. That's awesome. Um, so uh, a long time ago, I started doing like uh, bare knuckle kickboxing. And uh, I used to fight like club things. I fought in this back room in, uh, in uh, this little, um, what do you call it? Uh, uh, <laughs> I was a trainer and I can't think of the word for a gym, um, for a fitness center. And they had like this aerobic room. We used to do fights in there. And then a long time later, I was still doing it. And then I stopped fighting. And then I came back for one fight where I won a title in 31 seconds on a guillotine. And um, this kid... This kid was ready. He was he was just, he was a bomber. And um, I said, well, I don't want to get hit by that because I was hurt. So as soon as he came up, he came up long and wide. And I was like, I don't want no part of that. I stepped in with an up guard and caught his punch on my guard. And I was like, oh, snap. His head was right there. I just turned guillotine 31 seconds. Boom. I have a title. It's in my garage. I got my belt. It's ugly. It's ugly. It's that old ribbon style. But it's mine. Um, a poet. So a little something you all don't know until now. Um, I was a world known poet. I was with, uh, I was on this thing called Tata, uh, Talent Database. And for three months in a row that I was on there, I was the number one poet in the world on this site. And um, I actually have awards for poetry and, and different writings and stuff like that. Yeah, I bet you didn't know that. So, um, so that's another one. So, ah, the ice hole. So I have like just little keywords written down <laughs> to, to remind me of the 20 things I need to talk about. Um, that's true. You don't have to mention that one. Um, so ice hole. One day, me and a bunch of friends in high school, we were out just cruising around late at night. I don't know if it was New Year's. It may have been. I can't remember. But um, that's how old I am. Um, we were cruising. And we decided to go onto this reservoir late at night. And I'm just skating around on the ice, having some fun. And, um, so as I'm skating, there's an ice hole in front of me that I don't see. And I go boop into the ice hole <laughs> and, uh, it's like boop up to here on my chest. My arms were keeping me from falling all the way and the ice broke around the hole. And so here I am and I was wearing a pair of jeans and a t-shirt with like a, this light windbreaker and, uh, and some sneakers. So I pull myself up out of the water. Nobody even comes to help. They're all like, Oh my God, I pull myself up out of the water take off all my clothes. I'm in my skibbies and my sneakers. That was it. Threw my clothes on the ice, just left them there. And, uh, we cruised on out on the way home. My buddy had a 1974 Mustang or 1972 Mustang. And, uh, and we're cruising we're flying. I'm in the back seat, uh, with one person and there's two people up front and we get pulled over for, for cruising. There was a couple of cars. There was two of us, you know, two cars going and he pulled over both of us at the same time. And so, I told my buddy, I was like, look, when the cop gets here, don't say we're just let me do all the talking. So state police comes up to the window and he has his flashlight on. He looks inside the window and he's like, oh, I remember. And I said, sorry, sir. I started going like this. It's my fault. I fell in the ice, but we're trying to get me home. And he looks at me. And he goes, what is wrong with you guys? He's like, look, just get him home. Get him home. Try and watch your speed. So he let us go. We didn't even get a warning. He just sent us off. My buddies were like, that was awesome. It was, it was kind of cool. Um... Ah, the bridge jump. So if you've never been to Hampton Beach in New Hampshire, let me explain to you. When you're coming from Seabrook, New Hampshire to Hampton, New Hampshire, there's a bridge. It opens up so the boats can go by and all that. Um, when it's high tide, there's water down below that you can fly off if you really wanted to. Nobody ever jumps off the bridge because it's stupid. Um, but on low tide, the water goes in and it's only in the center, right? So me and two of my buddies decided to drive out there. Uh, to spend the night in Hampton Beach. We were going to sl just sleep in the car. And um, we get out there and our goal was we're going to jump off the, the bridge. We're going to jump off the Seabrook Bridge. And so we were stoked, man. We were ready to go. And when we get there, it was uh, low tide. And the water was very narrow and very shallow. And they were like, oh, we can't jump now, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, sure, we can. It's water, blah, blah, blah. So they're like, all right, well, maybe we, maybe we could still jump. And then we saw this little shark go by, sand shark. But in our heads, you know, we're, uh, you know, early 20s, late teens type thing. Uh, we're like, man, but if we jump and we get cut, then there's the shark. Because, you know, back then, or when you're young, you believe that, oh, the shark smells blood. He's going to tear you up. Found out later, it's not true. But 
so everyone was bummed there. We're like, well, now we can't jump. So I'm looking down off this bridge and it's a bridge. Boats go into this bridge, it's a big bridge. And uh, I'm looking down at the sand where the water for high tide used to be. So I said, well, why don't we just jump right there? And they're like, there's no water. I'm like, but there was water, so it's soft. And so they're like, well, you go first. So of course, D-bad, um, I jump. I jump and I hit. I hit the bottom mm, hard. It hurt so bad. But I couldn't tell them that because then they wouldn't follow me. So the next guy jumps and he lands both feet like this, but he kind of crunches down in his forehead. Boom, smack off the bottom of the sand. His body does like a backflip. He lands and you could see the pain in his face right away. And I said to him, I said, bro, shut up. Dom won't jump if you say it hurt. So the last guy jumps. And when he jumped, he landed like this with his feet kind of sideways and his knees went clack together. So he hits the ground. And he just grabs his legs and he's going, my knees, my effing knees, I broke my effing knees. And we're just laughing. Bah, ha, ha. We're like, get up, you puss. Bah, blah, 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 blah. So it was just fun. But we jumped in a bridge with no water. We did it. Um, let's see. Oh, I was a bounty hunter. There's one of the jobs I had. Uh, my last bounty hunt was in... Um, um, it was in New York. It was in uh, Spanish Harlem, New York. Um, and we had to go track this dude down and we went searching at his cousin's tire center looking for him. And, um, the guy, the bounty hunter I was working for, um, his name was Angus, Angus. And he used to wear this beret all the time. And he had this big old handlebar mustache and he was short and kind of fat old guy, but he was crazy cool. So we went out with our little crew and we went doing our little undercover deal and uh, we went down to Spanish Harlem, New York, hunting for somebody. We didn't find him that day, but we did find him the next week. So we did get our man. Um, volleyball. Woo, we I love me some volleyball. I mean, this one's going to be hard to say if I did it or not. But um, volleyball was one of my passions. I mean, I was a champion volleyball player. This might be true. It might not be true. Um but I used to play two on two beach competition. I played in New Hampshire. I played, um, I played for a weekend at Huntington in California. Uh, I've got to play different places all over, but most of my, most of my play was in New Hampshire. And then I joined an army team and, um, we got money. <laughs> so it was awesome. So, you know, getting paid to play volleyball was, um, was pretty awesome i mean because when you're playing beach comp stuff like that we're only you're only winning i mean you're only getting money if you win right so so we really had to concentrate on winning and um i had a a, a partner at one time i had a couple different partners but one um this guy i don't even know what country he was from but he was this foreign guy julian and he used to bring a cooler full of perrier and uh I hate that stuff. But one day I didn't have any drinks and it was hot. We're on the beach. We're playing volleyball. And he used to always like hike his shorts up in the front. So like all the way up. So all you'd see is his white thighs. And and then every time you get the, the balls coming to you, all you hear is, I am here. I am here. Okay. I know where you are. There's only two of us. So, um, but yeah, he offered me some Perrier one day and I was so thirsty. I took it. I was like, um, almost killed me on the beach that day. All uh, right. So, uh, I was a traveling salesman. Um, uh, I was traveling across the country selling magazine subscriptions. You know, those people that walk up to your car with this little thing and they, they're like, hi, I'm with this college and we're blah, 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 blah. And it's, it's all made up. It's all lies. I know because I did it. Um, they call that little black leather booklet. They say, this is your dick. You never lose your dick. So it's like really important. So, um, uh, for a number of weeks, I was a number one. I was number one. Yay. And number one, this is what it gets. You. It doesn't get you any extra money. No, you get to ride front seat in the van. Yep. That's what, that's what we got. So we literally, we'd go state to state in a convoy and we'd get these hotels, boom, we'd camp out and then we'd walk around. They'd some, you might get dropped off in front of a mall. You might get dropped off over, you might get dropped off in a neighborhood and you got a door knock. Um, but either way, that's what we did. And we just walked around and wherever we were. So let's say we were in, you know, like Colorado and you're like, yeah, I'm with, uh, you know, I'm with the Buffalo, you know, I'm going to school at Colorado university and, and blah, blah. And, and the, all the Colorado university, you know, cause you're in that area. They're like, Oh hell yeah, we're going to support you. And they buy your stupid magazine subscriptions. So 
I was a traveling salesman. Um, ooh, the convent wall. Ooh wee. So while in Italy, uh, I was I was in Italy. Uh, my brother was with me, and my aunt's husband, um, who was closer to our age, and it was my aunt, so it was kind of weird. But uh, we were all walking through Florence, Italy, right? We were in Florencia, and we go over this bridge. Like we get there's the Duomo, which is like this big thing. You got to go see. It's amazing dome. Um, and outside of the Duomo, you go down the road a little bit. There's a bridge where people go shopping. And then outside of the other bridge is just a bunch of stuff. Like all the main stuff is on the other side of the bridge. But um, so uh, a couple things happened here in Florence. One, they had a big soccer game. And uh, it was a huge match. Uh, Italy versus somebody. I have no idea. Or it could have been one of their, their inner country teams. But. I'm sitting in the hotel room with my brother and we hear this weird noise and we're like, what the hell is that sound? It was weird. So we look outside and there's nothing. It's these thin little roads, right? And um, all of a sudden out of nowhere, this just billion people kind of march around the corner all screaming. Nah, nah, nah. So they were having one of their soccer riots that you see on TV all the time. And I was like, oh snap, I got to go check this out. Now I was wearing... Um, I got to show you guys a picture, man. I, I was when I was jacked up and thin, um, but I, so I was a trainer in Gold's Gym and, and that's what I did. Um, and I looked the part. So here I am in this like a wife beater with a cowboy hat and some jeans. And uh, I decided to go out. My brother's like, no, you can't. This is different here. Blah, blah, blah. But I was this is when I was I was working as a constable, too. So I'm like, man, I got these guys. So uh, so I go out there and. As these guys pass, and then there's this huge, like, area, a big, um, uh, what do you call it? I don't know. It's just like a big open space. But after you get come out of the street, it's wide open. And um, so on one side are all these soccer hooligans, right? And on the other side is all the police in riot gear. They got the, uh, the water truck. I'm like, this is the first time I've ever seen this, right? I mean, in person. I've seen it on TV. That's how I knew it was going to be exciting. So I kind of walk out there. And I, I literally walk to the front of the police line, do, 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 cowboy hat on. I, I start talking that I pull out my ID and I'm like, Hey, I'm a Sergeant, blah, blah, blah. And like, Oh, Sergeant, blah, blah, blah. So they bring me to this, to one of their, their heads. And, uh, and so I'm standing with them facing these people. So, and I'm like, you know, in America, we do this different. We just go over there and beat the crap out of blah, blah. And they're like, Oh no, 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 no. So I said, I said, here, watch, let me show you. So I walk out like almost like in Braveheart where they walk out to the middle, except they didn't walk out to meet me. I walk out and I start screaming out, blah, 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 pointing at them. And all these Italian police officers are behind me just cracking up. They think it's hilarious, which it probably was from their angle. So then I walk back and I chat with them and I'm sitting on the side with them for maybe 15 minutes. And finally, all these soccer people just walk away. But it was just a really cool thing to be in the middle of that. So the next thing that we did in Florence was actually the next day. Cause this was our first day there. That was our first day. Um, we were unpacking. Um, we go across this bridge and we're walking around. It's, it's nighttime now it's dark. And we come across this huge wall. Like we had no idea what it was. Just a big wall with a building, beautiful building on the other side. No idea. Um, come to find out it was a convent. And so what I said is we should climb that wall and we should scale it and see what's over there. And now the people I'm with are more sensible. And they're like, dude, you're in Italy. This is a foreign country. You want to climb a wall? You don't even know what that building is. Um, they're like, no, because if you get arrested here, you're screwed. I'm like, no, it'll be all right. So I climb up on this wall to this overlook this building that I did not know what was. And I scaled this wall and went alongside the building and checked it all out. And eventually then I came back down and we walked away. But it turns out it was a convent and I didn't get arrested. So that was cool. So uh, that happened. Let's see. Um, the truck roll. My very first medal I ever got in the army um, was a, uh, a five ton troop carrier. Uh, there was 23 guys on this truck cruising and somehow they rolled and everybody went flying. They went into a bunch of like little trees, like, you know, four to six inch trees and um, some smaller. And the trees just got sheared from this truck. And there's little spikes left from sticking up out of the ground from these trees. Soldiers flew all over the place. Bust some. One guy broke his neck. The guy cut his, you know, his his scalp was completely bashed open. 
And uh, when we pull up in the second, in this, well, we were in the last truck. They, they were probably the fourth truck because we were just finishing a uh, uh, an exercise. And I was on the last truck to leave. And I was supposed to be on that truck, but one of my buddies was like, oh, I'll just wait for the last one. I'll say, I'll wait with you. So, um, so we get there. And as we're coming up, we see one of the soldiers coming at us, bleeding. And he's going, truck flip, truck flip. And he's not really making sense. And we thought, oh, this must be part of the exercise. They get down there. They get stopped. And they say, this is what you're going to do. And we're going to get this truck. No, it was real. So I look over and I see the truck flipped and I see soldiers all over the place like scattered not one person got impaled on these trees not one it's crazy because they were everywhere um I actually have a photo and the the write-up of this event um this is Fort Sill Oklahoma and um so we get down there and we start running boom we're getting everybody and then one guy who was behind this truck that's flipped comes out crying right I mean this is you're not supposed to cry in an event like this you're you got to, okay, hold on. This is what we need to do. We need to take control because you don't want to panic, you know, make people panic. So he's crying, oh, he's under the truck. He's under the truck. And we're like, what? So I go run into the back and sure enough, the truck, there was a little tree like this and the five ton trucks, 10,000 pound truck uh, is like leaning on this tree like this and the tree is just bent. The tire is on his ribs and the tree trunk is on his other side. So you couldn't get him out either side and you couldn't pull him out front to back. There was just no way. So I'm trying to assess it and I'm in a point where the truck is coming down because that's where his head was. I wanted to be able to speak to him. And um, and uh, I had other soldiers that come around. I had them go on the other side. That way if the truck fell, it wouldn't touch them, right? And so a drill sergeant comes up from Force Hill and he's like, hey, Captain America. That's what they call me. I said, Captain America, you got to get out of here, man. This truck's coming down. And I and I looked at him. And I said, Drill Sergeant, you're going to have to forgive me for not giving a shit about what you say. I said, but this is a 10,000-pound truck. If it falls on my head, I'm not going to complain about it in the morning. So he just looked at me. He said, do what you got to do. Bust it out. And he went to go help everybody else. So then I start yelling, give me an E-tool. Somebody got me an E-tool, which is a folding shovel, right? So I got the shovel, and we dug a little trench next to the tire and got this guy out, got him on a on an ambulance and he was boop, he was shipped out, he was gone. And then myself and one other guy stayed behind to, um, for like a equipment rescue, make sure all the rifles are accounted for and all that. So, um, so I got a medal and that was in basic training. I got a medal for heroism in BCT. Um, how many people get that? So, um, so that was that. I'm gonna try and go, we only have three more, so I'll try and go quick. Uh, back in junior high school, we had this big thing between the Italians and like the Irish kids. The, it was kind of like the greasers versus the socias, like the outsiders. And um, I used to, we used to have these brawls. We'd go out, we just have like little gang fights. This is junior high. We're eighth and ninth grade, right? And uh, uh, I used to have a knife, and it, but it was a uh, like a little Swiss Army type knife, and it had two blades and a corkscrew. So I had one blade come out here, one blade come out here, and the corkscrew go between my fingers, and that was my that was my weapon hand. And um, so this guy Giuseppe, uh, he sees me with this corkscrew coming out of my hands, and he goes, "Hey, what are you holding?" So I show him. And he goes, "That's a corkscrew," and I was like, "Yeah." <laughs> I was like, "I was like, well, it's nasty," and and so. So he goes, hey, look at Corky over here. Blah, blah, blah. So for a long time through junior high school, my nickname was Corky because I carried a knife with a corkscrew sticking out for um, gang fights, junior high gang fights, right? So uh, animal control officer. I spent time as an animal control officer, and it was dope. We had so many, so many great animal rescues. I mean, th this story could go on for an hour all by itself, but it's not going to. I'll just give you one. We got a call for this pit bull trapped between a building and a fence, and it was right outside of a school. So I got there with my partner, and we're trying to assess the situation. We can't get down there because in between this fence and this building, I don't know how the dog got in there, but it was just all like, um, like weed trees, kind of like the one-inch forest trees I have. And uh, they were just everywhere, so we couldn't get by there. And then there was debris, and it was in a crackhead location. So I'm like, well, we're going to do it the the hard way. So I climb up this fence. It was probably eight-foot fence somewhere in there. And I had my uh, my stick. With, you know, you pull it, boop, and it's the, the new stick. And I stood 
with one foot on the fence and the other foot kind of pressed against the wall and I waited for my partner. She went around and she was trying to coax the dog through and the dog was just going ballistic. It was scared, right? So as soon as the dog comes through, I noose it, boom, I pull it and now I have to lift it up to get it out to her. And uh, so I start lifting like this and at one point, um, I this was already broken. So I mean, this will never go up. I broke this in football, but this finger ends up breaking out here and it separates. So while I'm trying to hoist this dog up, so that kind of sucked. I couldn't drop the dog. So here it comes, it's getting closer and closer to me now. And I'm standing like, boop, like my legs are spread. So this dog's first, his head is going right by my nuggets. And then I have this dog's face coming right here. Like literally, I'm like eyeball to eyeball going, oh, don't bite my face. So I swing it around, boop, I lower it down. She gets the stick. We have the dog just then out of this school comes a classroom of little kids and here we are with a choke stick on this dog so i'm like all right look this dog's going crazy it's it's totally scared i don't know if it's a an aggressive dog or not but i got the feeling like i could handle it so i said i said i'm gonna put this on the fishing pole and the fishing pole was a um it, like a dog like a snare but it was completely bended so basically what you do is you hold this round metal hook that goes inside this line and curls around itself. So it looks like a fishing pole when it, when you tie your fishing pole to itself so the hook doesn't get into anything. And then what happens is you put the loop around, you let go of the little thing and it goes zip and it holds the dog and you can walk it around but the dog can get to you. So she's like, you're crazy. What if this dog comes at you? You're not gonna be able to stop it. I was like, yeah, but we don't want the little kids to see this. So do it, boom, the little dog ended up being great. The dog was just, once I had it on a, on a leash where it wasn't on a stiff stick, it calmed down. It was so loving. This dog was awesome. But that was a crazy cool rescue. Um, very, very cool. Animal control officer was one of the most fun jobs I've ever had in my life. If, if you're a young person and you are looking to get into something, look into animal control. It's very rewarding. Good job. All right, last one. Park ranger. I spent some years as a park ranger. Um, and it was a blast. And park rangers might think that okay, you only can go in the park, but that's not true. If you have a road that's called like Parkway or, you know what I mean, park, uh, then that's where all your, your because um, you're a police officer, all your jurisdiction is on all those roads. So we have like this road called uh, South Branch Parkway. It's a big major road. And so we would be able to, you know, go and get people down there. But I mean, and I'll make this one really quick, just from things of, where kids breaking into a pool and you had to chase them down, catching people with drugs, people late at night, getting people with weapons. We had a guy with a gun come to the park and start um, acting a fool. So stopping that kind of stuff and then just doing your regular road stuff and accidents and, and missing persons and, and search and rescue, stuff like that. But park ranger, that's a really cool job, man. That's fun. So that's the 20. One of those stories is not true. One of those stories is not true. I'll tell you this though, the story that's not true, half of it's true, but then the other half of it's not true. So that's a little, uh, that's a little tip for you right there. That's a little, who way said, okay, you mentioned a couple things about this story, about this job or this thing that happened. Um, so that's it. This knife is coming in the mail. It's already ordered. I'll get it, and as soon as I get it, whoever wins, you'll get it. Good luck. Everybody who guesses the right one, remember you have one shot at this. Put it down. I'm Donnie B. All day. Until next video.